And I'm going to pick up John chapter 10 and verse number 11. Look at what Isaiah said. And all of this connecting to what David was actually saying. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Go to verse number 3. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I give Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia, and Saber for thee. God says that I will be with you when you go through. Go back to verse number 2. When you go through the water, he says, I will be with you. When you go through the river, they will not overflow you because God says, I will be with you. When you go through the fire, God says, I will be with you. It will not burn you because God says, I will be with you. So David is relating to this experience of being shepherd. He's relating to God shepherding him in a time of difficulty and in a time of adversity. How much we need, how much we need him in the time of adversity and in the time of difficulty. Go to John 10 and verse 11. God says, I am the what? I am the good shepherd. What the good shepherd does? Give him his life for his sheep. We talked about that during the communion. That God is a good shepherd. He giveth his life for the sheep. Nobody else. Jesus died for the sheep. He gave himself for the sheep. It was not Isaiah. It was not Jeremiah. It was none of the prophets. But Jesus gave himself for the sheep. He gave himself for the sheep. When he was confronted in the garden of transfiguration and he had an opportunity to say, I will not be shepherd. He said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But not my will, but thy will be done. And he says, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to go to the cross. When he looked at the cup and he saw everything in the cup, he was, as he was looking at it, his humanity took control of him. And he said, Father, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He is a shepherd even when we are in a difficult situation. He is shepherd even when we are in trouble. He is shepherd even when your friends forsake you. I told you the people are fickle, they'll change on you. Jesus will never ever abandon the sheep. He will never abandon the sheep. He is a, the good shepherd. Yeah. Verse number four says something else. Let's go to the second, second point. He says, I am the protector. He's not only the shepherd. The shepherd also protects the sheep. Let me say to us this morning, my brothers and sisters, we are in a level and a season of spiritual warfare like it has never been before. Yes, Let me say to you that no general, no lieutenant, no colonel, no admiral will ever be an admiral in a battle without scars and some folk want to be in the battle but got no scar to show that they were in the battle but when you are in the battle you must have something to show that you were in the battle because the enemy will point his arrows at you he will aim his bullets at you and you cannot die for cover at that point in time you've got to stand and say i am not giving up by the grace of god because my shepherd will protect me. Amen. My shepherd will protect me. Yeah. The people who want you dead. Yeah. Uh -huh. But your shepherd will protect you. Yes. The people who want to see you get sick. But your shepherd will protect you. It doesn't matter what the enemy does. If you know the shepherd. Come hell, come high water. He will take care yeah. of you. He will take care of you. Doesn't matter what the enemy does. The enemy can hit you with his best shot. But God, who is your shepherd, will protect you. David remembered how God protected him from Saul, who was out to kill him. In spite of all the difficulties he, he encountered, he was confident that God was his protector. You remember the time when, when David was in the presence of Saul and a demon spirit was in Saul? Let me tell you something. Last week you saw what God did. Yep. 
in this place uh -huh. that possessed with several demonic spirits mm -hmm. and how God delivered that individual. Let me tell you something. The enemy is not your friend. He's not your friend. And so when, when David was in the presence of Saul, to calm his spirit and to make sure the demonic spirits which were controlling Saul as a result of disobedience and being disrespectful to what God said to him because God said to Saul utterly kill all of the Amalekites he decided that he would not do it and when God said Said the prophet Samuel to him, he was lying to Samuel, but Samuel said, I hear sheep in the background. I hear sheep in the background. And so Saul was after David. Even after God's anointing came upon David, Saul was under was, was after David. He was under attack by the enemy. Let me tell you what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants to strip you of your dignity, strip you of your value, strip you of your, your worth. But by the grace of God, you've got to stand up and say, it will not happen. Yes. Are you hearing me this morning, saints? Yes. It will not happen. Yes. And so when when David was playing on the harp, Saul had a javelin. Yeah. Go ahead. You gotta be watchful even in church. Yeah. You gotta be watchful even in church. And so when the javelin, when David is playing the harp to help him out, to calm him down, because they wanted somebody to come in and calm his spirit. And here is David playing his harp. He's vigilant while he's playing. He's playing, but he's watching. He's playing, but he's watching. Yep. You remember the men who went with Gideon, who uh -huh. went to drink water and forget that they were in a battle and they put on their sword and they put on everything. And God said to Gideon, these people cannot fight with you because they're not with you. They're not with you. And so you need to make sure you say to them, all who want to go home, go home. And so here is David playing the harp, but David is watchful. He's playing and he's watchful. He's watchful. He's watchful. And suddenly a javelin came from the hand of Saul. If David wasn't watchful, he would have been pinned to the wall. He would have been pinned to the wall. So when David writes about the Lord is my protector, he's writing from a position of experience that God protected him from the sword of Saul, from the javelin of Saul. Yes. Amen. Yes. That he is my protector. He's not writing from a position of somebody else's experience. He's writing that God has protected me. He has protected me. If you can only see in the heavenly realm the demonic spirits that are after you and after this ministry, you would understand that we need his protection every day as we wage war against the kingdom of darkness. He cares about me. He cares about you.